Porsche has been messing around, tinkering, experimenting, trying to bring us the perfect 911 sports car for the thick end of 60 years now. And like anything you might do for so long, it's had a lot of different goes at it and produced a lot of different sorts of cars along the way. 11 years ago, it gave us an all new kind of extra special Fast 911. And aside from the people who bought one, I'm not sure very many of us really noticed. It was, of course, the 911 GTS. The 997 version was the first, that was 2009 or 10, I think. Then there was a 991, and now there is this, the 992 GTS. And the idea is that this time round, the GTS becomes a bit more of a thing, you know. So far, we haven't really recognised the GTS as a sort of a, an institution in the same way that we would a GT3 or a GT2 or a Turbo or a even a baseline Carrera really. You know, a GTS has sort of been a trim level, hasn't it? Part of the problem was that if you ordered a 991 Carrera S with the right combination of power kit and lowered suspension and wheel and a couple of other options, you could sort of end up driving a 911 GTS by accident. It was mechanically the same, basically, but for the, the external dark body trim and the sort of design features that they use to try and set the car off, this time around, they've gone at the idea with a bit more commitment. What is a 911 GTS now? Well, you can have a coupe or a convertible like this one, you can have two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you can have eight-speed PDK or seven-speed manual, same price. You can even have a Targa if you want a GTS Targa. The engine gets an extra 30 horsepower on top of a Carrera S, so it's up to 473 horsepower. Torque goes up by a similar sort of, a similar gain, so about 30 pound foot up to 420 pound foot or something like that. They have got rid of some of the noise insulation in the car and they've they've retuned the active exhaust as well which comes as standard so they've gone for a slightly rawer feel to the powertrain than than a Carrera S has and I guess for all those people who came along and said the 992 was just a bit soft and too refined for their tastes I guess this car is for them because it's just got a bit more drama and audible flavour to it as well as performance. Externally, I guess you'd spot the car by the, the black badging and the black wheels. It's got some dark, smoked, chrome headlights and things, you know. Those kind of very suspiciously fashionable, dark, trim parts that so many cars are getting now. Internally, you get a GT, uh, a GT steering wheel, you get uprated seats I think and more sort of racy materials around the around the cabin you know more kind of uh, Alcantara they call it race tech but it's basically a kind of Alcantara and you get that on the steering wheel and on the door cards and some of the trim and the seats there is also a new new generation PCM infotainment system in the car and a few other sort of trim differences minor ones really the interesting thing is where it differs in terms of the running gear, the suspension. So rather than start with a, a PASM Carrera S this time, they've actually taken the wheels and the brakes and the suspension hardware from a turbo and applied it to the narrower body of the Carrera. They've obviously had to tweak some of the settings here and there to do that. There's an all new adaptive damper on the car, an all new PASM adaptive damper that comes as standard and then optionally you can have active anti-roll bars and four-wheel steering if you want it. So you can probably hear the difference that the engine and the, and the exhaust makes. <laughs> There's quite a lot more mid-range performance in this car than well than I was just thinking a GT3 had and it does that kind of fast in any sort of circumstance thing, you know. You don't need to be wound right the way up to 6,000 
to get it to really go. So we found a decent bit of mountain road here and we can begin to work out what this GTS is, is like. Probably it's a manual mode. So I've got, I've got the exhaust on noisy, I've got it in drive mode in Sport Plus, I've got the um, optional active anti-roll bars set to, set to Sport. Everything's in sort of angry mode. And yeah, it does definitely sound a bit raw, a bit more classic raw T911, and it's fast, but it likes to rev as well. So you get lots and lots of performance from kind of 3000 revs, you know, from the middle of the range. And it really keeps going to the far side of 7000 if you want it to, which combined with that extra audible flavour in the exhaust note, it's quite a sort of a combination. The chassis, well, it's a little bit hard to judge on the road. We'll be, ha we'll be having a drive on track later, so we'll revisit that. This is the convertible, of course, which is its own thing. It's tuned differently to the coupe. It's also 80 kilos heavier and less rigid. So it's more of a kind of a cruiser anyway than a, than a coupe. But even on these, you know, 20 and 21 inch wheels, even in this maximum sporty setting, it's much more civilised and comfortable than a GT3 is. And I suspect quite a lot more, more comfy than a, than a Turbo S is. When, when I first drove a Turbo S, I remember being a bit taken aback at how, how firm that was. And it's, you know, it's a 160,000 pound car now as well. So it really is quite a specialised thing. Whereas if you just want a 911 that's very fast and very usable, this GTS is probably it now. It's really comfy and supple and civilised. The body control, particularly on those new dampers, the body control is very good. Over a sort of a medium wave bump, you get one movement and then it's settled again. It's really composed. I mean, there is clearly more outright grip here than you get in a Carrera S. Balance kind of feels similar. It might be that the bigger wheel and the, the firmer spring has maybe taken some, some of the sort of accessibility out of the car's handling. I've always, I've always thought if you want a 911 that knows how to express itself, you either want a GT3 or you want an absolute bog basic Carrera with the smallest wheel you can get and the simplest spec. And the GTS, this, this car suggests there's probably still some truth in that because by adding grip and composure and precision, which is undoubtedly what they've done, they have perhaps taken away a little bit of the dynamic character. I don't know, that's probably harsh. This is still a really engaging car to drive, but it's probably got more grip than it needs. So now we're gonna find out what the 911 GTS is, is really all about. We've come to Porsche's brand new experience center in Italy. It's got eight of these things, um, eight? <laughs> eight of these things worldwide now. This is its first one in Italy. It's just outside Brescia. They call them the Porsche experience center. It's the kind of place that I guess a sports car might've been brought to years ago to be shaken down. The irony is of course that it's the customers that get shaken down in these places because these are the places you come to when you've put a deposit down on a car and they want to demonstrate how good all the optional systems are, the carbon brakes, the active dampers, the active roll bars, and you know, really convince you that it's worth spending the extra 15 grand or, or whatever it is. We're gonna head out. Now this is the GTS that I guess you might call the dynamic reference. This is the rear wheel drive GTS Coupe. Now this is a PDK. The manual I guess would be the one you would want if you wanted the sort of dynamically optimised car. But the thing to bear in mind is that a coupe is 80 kilos lighter than a cabrio. A two wheel drive car is 50 kilos lighter than a four wheel drive car. If you have a manual rather than a, a PDK, you're another 35 kilos lighter because the manual also comes with a, a conventional slippy diff rather than the, the active diff of the PDK. And then you get into the options and you must be able to save another 30 kilos with the optional carbon brakes. And Porsche also does something 
it calls the lightweight package for this car, which is something it started with a 911 Turbo S. And with that, you can take another 25 kilos out of your car with these lightweight carbon bucket seats, with lightweight glazing all the way around except for the windscreen, with a lightweight battery, and by throwing away the back seat. So in a lightweight package GTS, you just get the nicely upholstered dimples in the back there, just like you do on a GT3. So that's the car. Now we find out what it can do. This is a great little circuit. It, it was here before Porsche adopted it recently. It's only been open a couple of weeks, but it's got a great mix of sort of long, medium speed corners, sort of tight second gear corners, a couple of long fast straights, big braking areas. So the instructor should start speeding up now. There we go. As you can hear, sounds quite a lot rawer than a regular 992. When that car came out, there were complaints, weren't there, about how refined it was. Well, with this GTS, especially with a lightweight package, I don't think you'd have any complaints about the way it sounds. As ever, it's really free revving. I mean, the response is excellent for a turbo, and it keeps pulling all the way beyond 7,000 revs. And there aren't many performance engines that feel quite like that. <sighs> Chassis-wise, well, on the road, there is a clear improvement in this car with, with body control. I mean, the body control is pretty brilliant on a 992, but on this car, it really is something else. There's new dampers, and they just keep the car's body so poised and so level. They just allow it to move around enough so you can feel where the weight is, and it gives the car that 911 character. But it just never gets anywhere near to being out of control, and it works on the road as well. It's supple enough, civilized. It's a really brilliant compromise. I think with the with the chassis, with the bigger wheel and the slightly firmer spring, you maybe have to work the chassis a little bit harder than in a in a Carrera to get it to communicate a bit. I mean that makes sense. It carries more speed bit more secure but when you get to the limit of grip it still expresses itself really well it's engaging like 911s are you know you have to drive these cars they give you back what you put in there you go it's a 911 underneath it really is you just have to work it that little bit harder to bring the dynamic character out. God, it sounds good, doesn't it? A regular 911 does not sound like that, does it? Yeah, I like it. I think I like it more, in fact, than I do a turbo or a GT3. There's a controversial statement for you. It certainly has more duality to me than a GT3 does. Not as fast as a turbo, but I think it's more expressive. And if I wanted a 911 for every occasion, for the on-track day, just for enjoying on the weekend, on the road, yeah, this is the one, folks. This is definitely the one. 